gonna experiment with different design ideas on this little guy because I want this to be the best possible version and usually you know your second time around it's always better when you're making something so I'm doing my first time around in this miniature form and then the second time around should hopefully be perfect. It's a little hard to make it kind of perfectly accurate just because the fabric doesn't scale. <laughs> this is still full thickness type of fabric. I like the whole collar thing that seems to work and then the sheer piece and these extra little hanging down bits to hide the edges of the sheer. Now that I've worked through the process of making this little guy, I've got a better grasp on how things need to fit together, although I haven't quite gotten everything sorted out yet. I've got my general direction decided, so I think I'm ready to make that first cut into the fabric. It's a little bit scary. This first step really is just to cut one of the long eight yard pieces in half because I need uh, four yards for one side and four yards for the other. It's going to drape over top of the shoulders and then be stitched together along all those edges. These are going to be the armholes. So I'm not going to stitch all the way up here, but I want to now stitch the short edges together of both of those pieces. So I just need to get this all pinned up. Definitely still looks like just a huge blob of fabric, but you can start to see the shape coming out. Cut a six inch piece, fold it in half, seamed up one side, and this is getting sewn onto the inside of each of the shoulders. It gives you a place to insert the paracord, then you get all that gathering done for you here. You don't have to do individual pleats. PVC pipe. Thread that through the pocket, gather it on, grab the end of your cord, and just slide that on through. I don't know why I never thought of this before. Just waiting for my cord to come out the other end. There we go. Oh no! Oh! <laughs> Oops. I just dumped it right back out. <laughs> Try that again. I swear this was a lot faster the first time I did it. <laughs> okay. I've got my cord so now I just pull out the pipe. Just got tuck the rope over to the side there and then I've pinned it down here so I can just stitch a pocket for that. I'm trying to get the sleeves figured out. It's basically just a long tube that's slightly angled out to be wider at the wrist and slightly narrower at the shoulder. Then a lot of extra sleeve just so that it has more fullness, especially since this is kind of a thinner fabric than you might have used like for the movie. Uh, so I've left more uh, more fabric to bunch up a little bit to give it that fullness. But at the same time, I don't want it to be hanging down past the hand too much and constantly having to fiddle with it to get it arranged and looking nice. This is sort of experimental. It's kind of not the first idea that I've sort of tried, but I think it's the one that might work. I have a piece of webbing, add Velcro along a strip of this, and then periodically throughout here, kind of where these pins are, it's like 10 different places along the sleeve, I'm going to add strips of Velcro that are just stitched in the center and then there's a flap hanging around so then those flaps of Velcro can flip around and grab onto this piece of webbing so you've got the adjustability and the control over the look without having to fuss with it once it's set. I've got the Velcro here on this side for the strap that's going to keep everything gathered. Each of these little tabs that we just sewed on can go kind of wherever you want on this strip to adjust the uh, depth of the pleat, lock each of those around this, and you've got kind of a double connection there because the velcro does connect to itself here, but it also connects to this to make it just a little bit sturdier so your sleeves don't kind of go all funky while you're wearing the costume. I've left an extra length here, about an extra 12, 14 inches, something like that, so that if you need to make the sleeve longer, you can. You just let these out further along this uh, piece of the velcro and webbing. But, just so you have a place to store this if you don't want it longer, I've added a couple of extra strips here and so you can just fold it up and just loop this back around itself. Perfect. Okay, see so yeah, that's all held down. Now we can just flip this right side out so it's all nice and contained and looks quite nice. I'm adding in some pleats here along the front and along the back so that the um, fabric kind of stays a little bit more towards the center. It really wants to fall out towards this, the side edges because that's where kind of a lot of the weight is. So I need to make sure that that's, <laughs> yes, piggies, you're very squeaky. I need to make sure that that's distributed towards the center and we get plenty of fullness in both the center and the sides, not just the sides. To create the empty hood look, the wearer's head needs to be hidden and made to look like part of the torso. 
For this, I'm using lightweight couch foam to build big padded fake shoulders, and those are just going to strap on top of the real shoulders. Spray adhesive does work well on this kind of foam, so I just glued together smaller blocks, and I put some of those blocks up on end so that there's a hole going right through the center. So I've got the height built up for the shoulders, and I've got some space here for airflow. So now we just need to kind of cut these to more of a shoulder shape. Right now they're a little blocky. And I think I'm going to try to make it so that they can adjust in width. I think that might make it more comfortable overall so you can really customize that fit also just like with the sleeves it's nice to have adjustability if it's possible what i need to do is to be able to attach the hood between these two in a way that's going to be secure and i want it to be able to go up and down so if there's a lot of wind or if you need to fit through a lower doorway just be nice to be able to put that hood back down when you don't need it up and also maybe just kind of an interesting way to really feature that empty hood look just by putting the hood down like, oh there's nobody in there this is my just a cardboard pattern for how the supports inside of the hood are going to work and that's all going to be covered in fabric, but I need sturdy anchor points in these. So what I'm thinking, got some PVC. I'm 3D printing these pieces that are going to fit into the pipe and have threading embedded in them in this cool translucent filament that is by Scene Smart. It's a TPU, so it's really strong, a little bit flexible. Then I've got these little threaded pieces that I'm going to embed in the part. And then the little screw here that's got a knob to turn it by so this can be adjusted on the go. I've printed the hole just a little bit smaller than this piece here, so I'm going to use the soldering iron here to just kind of melt that edge a little bit first. I've got it on my steel block so I can get it, give it a nice hammering down. And because this is TPU, I don't have to worry about breaking the part with the hammer here. It's not going to do any sort of damage to that. Now I want to make it a little bit more secure in there, so I'm just going to stick the soldering iron in and let that heat up a little bit till it starts to melt its way in, just to make sure that the little teeth that are on this do grab properly into the filament. So this just takes a minute. I'm going to pull that out and quickly put the screw in just to make sure that it is still clear there, that there wasn't any filament getting stuck in the hole. That's good, you can see the screw right through. Now I just gotta do the other side. With this one, I have to be a little more careful because these do need to align so that the screw can go all the way in and there's a little bit of a gap between and it has caught in the second one also. It did go all the way through and there it is coming out the other side. Next, I'm gonna put a little, a little bit of a fabric backing on here so that I have another kind of wider surface to glue to the block of foam. And I'm gonna glue the pipe on. It's a bit of a tight fit. And then the pipes will be embedded inside of the shoulder pieces. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and cut the holes to be able to insert these pipes. Got this hot cutting tool here that I want to try out and let's just kind of see how this goes. I haven't used this before. Seems to be working and it's sure smoking a lot. Yeah this is not something I'd want to be doing inside. So it kind of feels like doing liposuction or at least how it looks like it must feel. The power adapter on this thing is so hot after just having it on for like 10 minutes. Definitely not a tool I would want to leave plugged in unattended, but it got the job done, so. I now need to glue this into the hole here. I'm gonna use the heat gun to help keep the glue hot long enough. If it starts to harden halfway through, then I'm not gonna be able to get it all the way into the hole here. I just heated it up, put glue on, and stuffed it all the way down, and now that's glued in quite securely. I'm also going to glue down these flaps here just for a little bit of extra secure fastening and then that will give me an edge also to stitch the cover to. I'm now working on covering those foam shoulder pads with fabric. Now for one thing it just makes it look nice but the main reason is because I need a sturdy skin that I can sew attachment points onto because if I glue or sew something just onto this foam it's gonna rip because it's gonna be only pulling on that little spot whereas if I have this full covering of the fabric that's nice and secure and it's going to be stitched down tightly then I can stitch things onto you know any point of this and that's going to be a fairly sturdy attachment point. So this is created just by pinning the fabric over top of the foam inside out so I get my seam lines so it's just like you would like slip cover a cushion or a sofa or something. Now some of these areas I can't sew down yet with the machine they're gonna to have to be hand stitched on because I do need to be able to put it on over top of the foam and that's also going to give it some internal reinforcement by having that skin wrap all the way through and around the piece. This here is going to be the back attachment point. I first patterned it out of paper so I could get an idea of how large it needed to be. That's going to go across like this and be adjustable here just with velcro so you can control how widely spaced the shoulder pads are. You're not 
uncomfortable and feeling claustrophobic. I'm using Kydex because it is so strong. I need it to have a little bit of structure in there so that it does stay in place. So that's gonna get put inside of the pocket and then I can stitch that onto my fabric covering. Then I'm gonna add Velcro straps that I can adjust the spacing here as needed. There's enough space for airflow so it doesn't get like completely stuffy inside of these. I'm adding in straps over the tops of each of these shoulder pieces. I used the machine where I could. So I'm just gonna hand stitch that into place the rest of the way down. I sewed a buttonhole here so that I have a secure place to insert the screw. So I'm just trying to get that all aligned. And yeah, now that's nice and sturdy. I've got one more buckle to add to the back just to make sure that these straps don't drift. We have a front strap to keep these from drifting outward, keep them in place exactly where they're comfortable. And then the underarm straps, which again, they're adjustable. That's a, uh, I think as fitted as it gets for me. I've got the hood sort of mocked up for the first time here and you can really get an idea of the scale of this. So the person's head will be here and then this hood just goes right up just got temporary supports in there right now and just quickly draped the fabric on just to check kind of my proportions and whatnot. Cut out that hood pattern from EVA foam and now I'm just gluing those pieces together. I just went to assemble this and realized I forgot something. Originally I was planning on making this lower portion here foam to about here and then switching to kydex. Now I remember why I was going to do it that way. It's because my screws are not long enough to go through two layers of foam. So... Now I can only attach one of these. So I just trimmed this off and cut a slit in here and then inserted a piece of kydex of the same size but with an extra bit here so that it can overlap and that seems quite sturdy. Now I'm going to cover them in fabric. I used my same pattern to cut out the pieces but I added in some extra so I'd have plenty of seam allowance. And I'm just going to pin it in place inside out so that I know exactly where to sew to make sure that it fits. Pull up it right side out and then just hand sew that final edge. I just reinforced these holes by stitching around the edge because with the covering on here, I still need to be able to insert the screws through because this headpiece here is going to attach to the shoulders, of course. But I'm a little bit worried that over time it might start to wear through those threads. So I've just got some uh, cheetah filament in here and I'm just gonna pump a little bit of filament over top of the threads and then just press that into the weave of the fabric. And that will put a barrier, keep that friction from potentially breaking through over time. I'm all the way up here at the top of the ring wraith on a ladder because I'm having a little bit of an issue that I wasn't expecting on this. I've just attached this back strap which is sewn in along here and then I've got some extra straps sewn here just to keep these from overextending. But I found that even once I have this tightened to where I want it to go, with a little bit of extra pressure, it goes right down. Because this is flexible foam, it's not something stiff, so just by squishing itself down it gets enough loose this here to go all the way down. I just want to stop this from flexing. I'm gonna just attach a strap. I mean it's way better. This was behind this strap and it was keeping it from being as tight as it needed to be so now that I've moved this strap to be in front of this support strap this isn't going anywhere now. I kept that same concept of having the spacing held in around this area but instead I'm just I'm just sewing in a, a panel of fabric here so it's going to be supported all along here and keep it from deforming. I was going to have the hood part be separate from the supports, but in the end it just seemed like the best option to sew it all together so that there's no chance of it slipping out of place and so I can arrange it properly without having to completely rearrange it from scratch every time you want to wear it. So I've stitched along here just to keep that from billowing down because I want to make sure that the empty hood is clear and it looks you know, fully empty as much as possible. And then I'm also stitching down the back here, and then there's just some loose extra fabric here that can be tucked in at the back so it looks like all one piece. So when this is mounted onto the shoulders, you can kind of see the screw a little bit through the, uh, the mesh covering, and also it just is potentially something you could bump your head on or something. So I just want to put a little bit of padding on there and also provide a place to store the screw when the costume is disassembled for uh, storage or, or for transportation. So I've created this little pocket that has just a Velcro closure, one for each side. This one's already sewn in place, so then once the screw is in here, that will Velcro down, and when it's taken apart, just pop this open and your screw is safely stored inside so that it doesn't get lost. These are the oversleeves that are going to attach to the whole shoulder setup, not the ones that go on your real shoulders, but the ones that go on the padding and conceal all the strapping underneath. This is the first one that I did and I'm not super happy with it. It came out kind of puckered and I had just a single pleat here and the fabric doesn't distribute very well. I did it a different way this time. Um, it's simpler, it's just 
three straight pleats at the back. I didn't try to angle it at all. It is more neat looking and it also gives the sleeve a little bit more of a poof at the like the far side of the shoulder. So it looks better and it functions better. So I'm gonna end up just ripping out a little bit of stitching on this sleeve and make this one match that as opposed to the other way around. Now I'm making the faux collar that's gonna cover the head. So this is just a strip of fabric that I've turned in all the seams to make it nice and neat. And I've pinned it onto this piece of sheer fabric that's been doubled over. And that's, this now just needs to be top stitched on so that I've got a fake collar attached to a nice mesh kind of shirt. wasn't staying up where I wanted it and so I just folded it over to make this little triangle collar. It does the job of kind of distracting and making this look more like a shirt and less like a piece of fabric draped over your head. You can adjust where the eye level is and hide as much of your face as possible with the multiple layers and then here you've got a place to see through where there's only two layers. I'm adding in now a little bit of Velcro on the back of each of these so that it can stick to the padded shoulder pieces. Make sure it stays in place and doesn't shift around with a hole right here for the Hood to go down and attach to the screw points in the shoulders. We're going to position the slit right at the edge of the shoulder padding. Both of these together with the screw, this slides down and you just screw it into that hole in the shoulder and tighten that up. The strap is attached from the top up here so it just comes down between those layers of fabric around the lower support, pull up the hood, and then we'll be able to buckle that in place. Okay, so there's the whole long seam. This goes at the back of the neck. All the rest of the fabric goes forward. And this is gonna end up covering everything at the back. The final piece. Cooling fan. So this fits perfectly inside of the ventilation holes. It can suck in air from one side, blow it out the other, and get some cross ventilation so it doesn't get too unbearably hot inside of this. I'm starting the weathering process now. My go-tos have been the 80 grit sandpaper and then the 150 grit on a sanding stick. I did end up starting to trim off the selvage edge here just because even though yes okay it's already got that frayed look but it looks mechanical. It looks exactly like what it is, the edge of your roll of fabric and people who are familiar with fabric will see that right away. It doesn't look natural. We want this to be a natural warm kind of look so I'm just trimming away a little bit of that selvage edge and then I can wear it down further. I like to take the stick here, just rub that in random places and blend out the weathering so it's not just on an edge. And it really starts to make this fabric look like a more natural fiber fabric versus the synthetic fabric that it really is. So we're gonna get that lightweight and it being this polyester suiting and then get the texture just from the wear pattern versus having to use a heavyweight wool type fabric. I found a way to speed it up a little bit. Just got a big cement block here and it's rough enough that if you take your edges and just rub them on it really hard like this, it's a little wobbly because <laughs> my table's kind of wobbly, but just rub that along. It really gets the weathering process started as opposed to doing it from scratch by hand. It adds some nice snags, gets the unraveling process started. Already it's looking a lot more weathered and like it's been ripped and whatnot. And that was much faster than doing that with just the sandpaper. The sanding stick with the 150 grit is pretty useful for areas like this. It's nice because you can get some good pressure applied in a small area here. Really target that. For this area, I was able to get a lot more of the threads showing, which looks nice just by uh, scraping this with the knife. You just kind of go over it a bit. Yeah, that's really cool right there. You got all those threads, just as you can see right through now. So a lot of different tools, and they're uh, all working together to create an interesting effect. I've got the hood portion weathered. Now I'm just going to go ahead and try the paint on it. I'm going to be focusing the weathering just towards the bottom, like to add mud at the bottom, essentially. I'm not going to spray paint the whole thing, because then it's just going to be like crispy all over and just kind of overdone. So I'm going to focus really on the bottom. I can always add more later. I'm also just blending it up a little bit with the darker brown so it doesn't look completely out of place down here. So you got dirt that would scatter its way up and freed out. I think that's it on the dirt for this though. And then we'll of course have more dirt at the bottom of the robe itself. This is just the part that hangs in front and goes over the head. It's just the hood section. I'm also giving the whole thing a bit of a once over with this gray dark primer or dark gray primer. 
just to take down the sheen a little bit because that, that shininess of the fabric is kind of a dead giveaway for it being a synthetic fabric. I want it to look more like a natural fiber, so it just takes the edge off of that shininess. It's pretty subtle, but I think it'll help, especially like when you're taking photographs of it, when the light catches those fibers. I'm taking the weathering just one step further on the edges. I'm using a faded blue, yellow ochre, and white color here, mixing them together. Gotta go really light on the white though, otherwise it starts to look like paint instead of fading. I've just got a big brush that's not very nice or anything, just really coarse. I got just a little bit of paint, mostly water on there. And just work it in a little bit on those edges. And then blend it out a little bit, like it wasn't just the edge got weathered and the rest of it looks like brand new. And it's very subtle. If you make it not subtle, it just looks very odd. And like you painted it. But if you keep it nice and subtle, do it in layers, then it really just helps the cloak to look like it has a story behind it versus the story being, hey, I bought this cloak. I'm not going to attempt to put this entire costume on by myself. First off is the cloak. And of course these sleeves can be adjusted, but I'm just gonna leave them this length. Let's see if I can get this on without having everything fall down. Trying to put this costume on myself, let me know that you do need another set of hands to get the shoulders and the hood properly positioned. It doesn't help that this is designed for someone who's tall, for a human, and not just tall for a hobbit like me. I'm not gonna be able to model this costume. It is just way too big. So I need a way to get some good video and images of this without having to subject somebody else to the extreme heat and humidity that's outside, but I do wanna do an outside photo shoot. So I had to kinda of get a little creative with this and find a way to stage the costume. So I will take you on that portfolio shoot adventure in a future video. Stay tuned for that. I hope you had fun on this project. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Oops, and there goes the light.